Ugh. Can't even see. Anyways, good morning, everybody. It's Monday. Um, I started work. Well, first I woke up at five fifteen. Started work at six. I have a new schedule change because my son is starting uh, spring training, and because he. Uh, does his school at home for the rest of his term. Uh, he has to be driven over to uh, school right after his uh, school. When his school is finished, he goes to school for football practice. I wanted to come here because I am continuing to work on the next video, which is on the Cures Act. And there's a lot of information. I, I, I think I took on that first request uh, without knowing what the information I have to go through. Uh, I had to go through so many hours of presentation, at least three hours, I would like to say. And then talking about information blocking and all of that stuff and the interoperability. I mean, it's crazy. As of right now, I do scripts for the presents for the for the videos, and so far it's up to four pages. And that four pages could be, uh, I'd like to gauge maybe ten minutes for a video, so it could be longer. <laughs> it could be really long. So let's see how that goes. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next part. I'm about to finish a 10 hour day. Um, I wanted to do this entry because I normally do eight hours and to do 10 hours, it's a lot. So it brings in the, a discussion, you know, could you work five eight hour days or four 10 hour days? I prefer to do eight five hour days only because I think my brain <laughs> can only hands, handle so many audits in one day. Um, I typically can do if I am not distracted, if everything's working great. Uh, maybe under about 20 audits, a little bit more if I'm good. Um, on a normal day, then probably greater than 17 or 18 around that. Uh, so the work I do is auditing, clinical validation auditing. So I'm reviewing charts. And so that's a lot, a lot of thinking, a lot of consideration, a lot of letter writing. But yeah, eight hours is enough for me. But to do 10 is a lot. I'm doing 10 today because we have uh, a bit of a systems update tomorrow. So uh, my day is going to be delayed Oops, until like 10 o'clock in the morning. So I have to make up the time that I'm supposed to be missing for tomorrow today. So that's why I have a 10 hour day. I'm exhausted. So that ends today, Monday. I'll see you guys next day. <laughs> Hey guys, so this is my whiteboard uh, where I brainstorm some stuff. Let me move this back. Jeez. <laughs> um, so last night while I was editing the well the the vlog, uh, I got into I guess a discussion about free CEUs versus paying for CEUs and I got a lot of feedback about it to the point where I think I should talk about it or just bring up a conversation about it. So free is is good. Who, who doesn't like free? But sometimes the things or the CEUs that are offered for free is something that I don't necessarily need. Um, 
I think one of the biggest concerns here with the with the free CEUs are costs and being able to afford CEUs on top of annual memberships, books, and I think there was a comment where employers do not offer free CEUs or offer CEUs to their employees, which which is kind of sad in a way. But there is discussion in a, my in a group that I just obtained, which used to be Hit Knots, where a vendor or a company can sign up to uh, offer free CEUs to their employers, but I believe they have to be a vendor and you have to pay to be a vendor. So my real question is, is free really free? And that's something I need to get into because that, I mean, everybody loves free. I mean, that's that's understandable, but do we have a bigger picture on what a free CEU entails? I mean, to tell you the truth, I don't pay for any CEUs only because I put in the time to volunteer with many associations, uh, AHIMA, FHIMA, AAPC, ACDIS, local chapters, regional chapters, my time and expertise on the things that I know. And because of that, they reward me with CEUs and even honorariums. I mean, it's great. Hey everybody, it is, can't even see. It's 8.54. It's almost 9 o'clock uh, in the evening. I've been up, what, since... <laughs> since 4.15. I don't know why I'm not sleepy yet. I look tired, but I'm not sleepy. But, um, what am I doing? Hold on. Let's, uh, let's show you here. So, I think in the last entry... I, I had mentioned about free CEUs, so I'm working on that. I'm trying to create a list. Now, let's go back to me. I, I think it's story time. So, what had happened, well, what I what I inherited was um, a group that used to be Hit Nuts, and that was ran by Mary D Dudash white and i mentioned this in a in a podcast episode but anyways um apparently her website got hacked and i believe i believe i mean she was already retired already i think and um that happened and so i'm like i don't blame her she's retired and she's like i'm done with this so she needed to find somebody to i guess take over it and I think she reached out to a couple people, including myself, but I don't think anybody jumped on the the train here except for me. <laughs> so so I took it on. Um, I took on, she gave me a group of 7,000 people. That's a lot of people. And uh, yesterday, well, with any group, let me let me go through this. With any group that I start... Early on in, in the medical coding geek days, if you guys were in my group, or if, if you saw me in any of the other medical coding groups that used to be around, the way I understand the direction of the group, depending on what, I guess, the theme is, in this case, it's free CEUs. I mean, I understand free is free, but... <clears throat> I wanted to ask questions in the group, but for some reason I got pushed back a little bit, maybe. I don't want to say pushed back, but I got like, why are you even asking these questions? I ask questions because I want feedback. I want feedback to, I, to really identify the root problem is why are we so hungry for free CEUs? Um, the underlying problem, as I mentioned before, is <clears throat> the cost of CEUs, the cost of maintaining your credential, the cost of maintaining your association fees, 
why is that? And there was one um, post or entry that uh, kind of opened my eyes is that for nursing, there's a ton of free CEUs for nurses. But yet nurses make more than medical coders as far as I understand uh, on an entry side. So why is it difficult to maintain a medical coding credential on an entry level? Okay, so that's something I might have to investigate a little bit more. But yeah, that's that's the that's the full story on that. Um, but I'm working on a list. It's hold on, let me show you. Yeah, I might as well show you. It's a really long list, <laughs> and so far I've gone through the AMBA, and they've they already have a ton of CEUs. So I'm gonna go through all of this list and kind of extract it. But I want to do it in a smart way, that I'm just not doing all this work and handing everybody this free CEUs. So there's there has to be a better way in doing this. So last night, um, before I went to bed, I, again, did some work. I found some CEUs. I only found like six free CEUs. And then I posted it in the Facebook group that I now run. <laughs> and um, it seems like the members in the group found my website because I think I put my website there. They found the newsletter sign up uh box and since last night this is my uh my mailbox of people subscribing for the newsletter so it goes to show that people love free um and uh i'm hoping i can come up with a creative way uh to share this i mean so far i only have six i'm waiting for another uh, vendor to release their CEU list and once that is set I believe it's gonna be more than than six so again uh, for those watching from this group uh, thank you guys for uh, signing up for the newsletter it was <laughs> it wasn't my intent to blow up my newsletter uh, which is now over a thousand um, but yeah I guess this seems to be the way to share it thank you guys all right everybody today is thursday evening and i normally do some podcast editing the last vlog that i did you caught me at the end so i'm actually going to show you the beginnings of what i do when i prepare a podcast episode for the next day so again thursday evening to a Thursday evening work to release a podcast for Friday. That's the schedule that I've kind of stuck with. Um, so right now I am um, rendering the full episode. What I do for the guests is I give them the unedited copy. And so this <laughs> this is a two hour, two hour um, discussion with again, Stacy Tortorica from, from the last vlog. And uh, I am about to send her that. After that, I'm going to record the introduction and the outro of the podcast, which I do separately. So you'll see me do that. All right, so let's see if I could do this multitask, which I, I, I am very bad at. Um, I'm going to record the intro and outro. So this microphone. Um, it's an AKG, that's the brand. Uh, again, connected to my H4N, Zoom H4N Pro. Uh, the connection is an XLR. That's the one thing that I didn't mention last week. XLR connection versus a USB connection. Uh, the XLR is what is used for like, you know, regular bands, music bands. Um, hold on. One of the cool things about recording your voice is listening to your own voice. So for those that are um, aspiring to be speakers, I highly suggest you listen to your voice. It'll help you with pronunciation, 
how you present in your uh, speaking event, how you slow down, how you enunciate certain words. And this, this here, all of this stuff that I have done um, has helped me with that. Anyways, let's see if I can, again, multitask, record, and record video, record audio for something else. All right. So what I'm doing is I'm going to hit the play button and I'm going to record <laughs> I'm going to record the the introduction and possibly the um the outro. Hold on. Hello everybody. Welcome to the Not Else or Classified podcast. If you're listening to this podcast for the first time, welcome. Over over 70% of our listeners listen to this podcast through their iPhone. So please pick up your Apple device, go to Apple Podcasts, and leave our show a five. Uh, I think I'm I think I, <laughs> I'm getting distracted, so let me record this intro. Hello everybody, it's uh, Friday evening, long day, why is it following my hand? Try again, there we go. Um, again, started work early uh, for my son's football practice, he finished his first week and now what I'm doing on a Friday evening, I'm not griddling anything, but I have a interview with Sonal Patel, who was a previous guest on the Not Ultra Classified podcast. Um, she is interviewing me on her podcast called Paint the Medical Picture Podcast. I think that's what it is. Uh, if you guys don't know, she used to work for a museum in research, I believe, and then she moved her way up from coding into coding and into compliance. So. I have an interview with her. It's a tw it's a 20 minute interview, which I'm gonna do my best because I normally do two hour interviews. So to cut it real short with my answers, um, it's 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 gonna be some work. <laughs> so I I will do my best. Anyways, um, what else did I want to say? There we go. I just contacted Blue Garcia. Uh, she's also been a uh, podcast guest. She also has her YouTube channel, Medical Coding with Blue. Um, she, her, well, her episodes, her her episodes on my podcast, the Not Us for Classified podcast, uh, became the most downloaded episodes for 2021. And I just told her that she's all happy and excited and humbled as well. But it goes to show if you have a good story to tell and you have good energy plus you have the right attitude in this profession in anything you will get far so she's done great things i just finished telling her she's she's all excited and happy and um, again 2021 for me as has always been about collaboration so i'm collaborating with people trying to help people out they help me out in return it's a win-win situation MedicalCodingGeek.com